we're clearly in the era of COVID. I mean, that, that's occupied all of us uh, for a long time. It's basically shut down our hospitals for a while. So from the clinicians, is this affecting the way you're treating things? Are you going more toward oral therapy, less visits, fewer visits to facilities where patients would have to congregate and interact with healthcare workers? Dan, you wanna start? Sure. Um, what, what we've seen is first the unintended, uh, so the presence of, of COVID led to patients that we were managing their anemia, say with, with EPO and we had a hemoglobin targeting mine, they were supposed to get monthly hemoglobin checks. Some of them might even have been coming in for their injections and they just stopped. You know, that just didn't happen. So there was this gap in care. Then there was more conscious decisions of us deciding um, that individuals could delay institution of care. We switched their injections to home therapy if they were on coming in for it. Um, and we started to open up our infusion center much earlier than we were opening up any of our clinics. So we were fortunate to be able to get people in and give them IV therapies, including IV iron, um, uh, pretty uh, uh, within a month or so of the shutdown. So that you know, it 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 was a real change. And could we go to all oral therapy? We probably could have. I had mentioned that Arixia earlier, and that would have been another option if we were unable to give IV iron. Uh, does this change the way the payers have looked at all of this? Are you willing to pay more? If I, if I may, Peter, sure. I just want to add to what Dan said, because I think the answer is unique to individual states, given at the access um, that patients would have to healthcare institutions and some of the regulations. But, but what we saw in Michigan, uh, first of all, there's a big shift to telehealth. Patients became very frightened to come to any healthcare facility, right? Even, even if they were masked. Um, so so I, I, I don't think there's one answer, uh, but a lot of that is going back to normal. Telehealth, I think, is here to stay, but the fear factors have dropped off significantly. Yeah, I'm here in, in the hub of this all. I'm coming to you from Manhattan, and uh, our numbers are, are dramatically down. So some of this may be transient. Uh, from a payer community, has there been a change in what you're willing to pay for? Um, you know, I, I think it's still too early, and I think the peer community is learning uh, as we go uh, about how to how to manage right time, right place, and utilization of services. Um, so to be determined. All right. And are there are there gaps from a clinician's perspective right now, uh, without going into the newer therapies, but just the therapies we've discussed in terms of safety, administration, efficacy? What are, what are you looking for? So, uh, Dan, you want to go ahead? Oh, go ahead. So I was going to say, I think to, to Stanley's earlier comments, and certainly building on Dan, uh, we have 30 years of very good understanding of a managing anemia using uh, ESA slash iron combinations. We understand the safety very well. We understand both the population health issues and then the individual patient care issue. And we even understand the efficacy based on states of inflammation and other items. Um, so I personally am very comfortable with my understanding of how to administer safety profiles and efficiency. But remember, we're delivering a drug, uh, erythropoietin, in ESA, at pharmacologic doses. And data from the TREAT and uh, CHOIR trials suggest, as you mentioned that high pharma pharmacologic doses uh, might be problematic when it comes to cardiovascular outcomes. So this really, being comfortable with what you know should not inhibit you from moving into the future of anemia management. And I think we're gonna talk a bit about that. Mm -hmm. if, if you wanted to make up a wish list of all those things that you would like to do, but the standard therapies up until the present day didn't give you, in terms of safety and efficacy, what would that, maybe a set of bullet points, what would that wish list include? And, and Well, the playoff what we, what we have is, number one, no infusions or injections. Patients don't like them. Uh, the problem with EPO is they need to keep giving them. Um, also, that product needs to be stored in a refrigerator 
and not frozen. And God knows what they do once they get it home. So you're giving them an expensive therapy that they're supposed to store properly. So that those are all big issues. So ideally therapies that are that are oral can be given on a simple um, standard treatment plan. I you know once a day is very people can do that sort of things. Three times a week, fine, people can do that. But you don't want to get into anything more complex than that. Um, so avoiding all of that w would be ideal. Yeah, and I'll, other I'll, I'll, I'll just, again, build on that. So I agree with Dan. An oral agent, frequency of dosing because of pill burden, avoidance of iron, storage requirements, um, I, I think are absolutely critical. And a product that is safer potentially uh, and doesn't have the cardiovascular problems associated with ESAs. Well, and, and maybe even more stable hemoglobin, so you don't have to be test checking it every 28 days. You know, it'd be nice if once you proved after several months they're stable, you know, a check every two or three months would be adequate. That would be wonderful. You know what's interesting to me? is I trained a long time ago, and I understood every bullet point that we've made in this discussion so far. And what that means to me is that up till right now, there's not been a lot of new stuff out there. No, I think uh, the, only, the only issue was they were building on erythropoietin, uh, <clears throat> creating longer half-life. So whether it's Darby, which is, is given every couple of weeks, or Mercera, which you can dose monthly, uh, you know, maybe some of the biosimilars. Okay, but that's it. I mean, those, that's kind of gilding the lily, it would seem One to me. One drug class, 24 right. years. 